of the Rocket Right Show. I'm Dr. Case Heller in the house with Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And we're so excited to have with us Mark Rogers, the owner of the Texas Club, and um, getting ready for a big 40 years. 40th wow. anniversary. That's a huge milestone, Right after your birthday. Mark. You just had a birthday this week. You know, that's a long time, 40 <laughs> years. You know, it is. I was pretty young when we opened that club up. You was just a baby, right? <laughs> And so was Mike, because his birthday was, what, a month ago. And we had a big celebration. Yes, which tonight. was great. I was there. I loved it. So I'm just hoping that with the 40th anniversary celebration, it means that we're just going to keep on keeping on, right? As long as we can, as long as Louisiana lets us. Absolutely. Well, I want to go way back in time, because I don't know, I mean... <laughs> But, you know, I don't know if everybody knows. It wasn't that long ago, was it? 40 years. Yeah, Look, it seems like yesterday. <laughs> but, you know. We were graduating high school about that time. So. But, you know, when people, if, if anyone goes to your website and looks at the history, yeah. I think that even though they may have been to shows there over and over, they will probably be amazed at some of the acts that have played there through the years. I mean, because they think about country, but even some of the rock acts, when I looked at, you know, Three Dog Night, Joan Jett, I mean, that's crazy. Yep. The Almond Brothers. The, the Almond Brothers. Brothers. Oh. Sticks. I, I Sticks. know. I mean, my husband, that that um, that Almond show, I forget it was like two of them together or something like that. It was My husband was like, man, I wish I was there back then, because no, that was, had to be crazy. It was... Dickie Betts opened for Greg Allman. At that yes. time, Greg Allman was uh, a solo artist. Right. The first time he came, he came with Elvin Bishop. That's the show. My husband loves mm -hmm. Elvin Bishop, and he said, oh, my gosh, I wish I could have gone back in time and been at that show because that had to be freaking killer. Well, the second time when Dickie Betts opened, they weren't officially the Allman Brothers band. So when the, each one finished their show, they got together and jammed as Almond Brothers. That's crazy. Crazy history. Yeah. Crazy history. So the, the, de the opening they day... They might not was, have even been a band if it wasn't for playing there together to hang out. Well, I brought them back together. What can yeah. I say? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the club opened April 22nd, 1981. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, well how did you know how did you decide and how did the family decide because this is the other cool thing i think is that it's been a family owned and run business for all these all these years how'd y'all decide to like open a club well it was it was uh i don't know it was a dream maybe or an idea that just came to mike and i one day and we approached my dad we were in the auto parts business okay mike and i had a store my dad had but we were all in it together you know Mm -hmm. and so it, everything we did, we did together because we learned business from our, our dad, you know. Mm -hmm. He went into business in 1961. So we opened up a club, our first club, on Bennington Avenue. It was a disco. Mm -hmm. It was right after John Travolta's movie, yeah. right. Staying Alive. And it lasted for about a year, and we totally failed at it. I mean, you know. <laughs> but it was a hell of a party for a year and a half, I can tell you yeah. that. <laughs> well, we leased it out, and another group made a country nightclub out of it so there were a couple of, but before we went out of business i had to learn how to book entertainment so right. I, where do you go in 1979 you go There's to the no yellow Google. pages right, right. You go to the yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. And, you know, and i taught myself it was tough and but we brought in uh joe stampley and i remember we brought in ohio players and grassroots and some rocks but we also brought in hank williams jr and that's when i met him and um, he suggested we put him in a bigger place the next time, you know. That's crazy. And so we just kind of melded that idea, a country nightclub, which was very popular because the John Travolta movie again came out. Mm -hmm. With and, Urban Cowboy. Yes. That's right. And so Urban was real strong. They had to learn different dance moves then. Well, neither one mm -hmm. of the country places at that time were doing live entertainment. So we decided to put live entertainment with the country and those guys went away we stayed and mm -hmm. uh, and you're still here and we did our first show there yeah i think it's really kind of cool that's that, great uh, cj has played with hank williams jr and yeah, it was when up down went number one like the next day he's opening well, with leonard with um well he, hank williams and leonard skinnard yeah, those he, are like and that was in raleigh one of my very favorite places yeah, in the world that was. but that was, that was so that was cool a, just a, what, a two years ago big week 
he a was huge like, big week. Yeah, it was a huge week. It's like I don't think it could get any in any better than uh, you have your first number one song as a songwriter yeah. and your idols you get to open for that weekend because of course that's a, a surreal huge moment. Fan. But and so now CJ's coming to play for their 40th anniversary, and, and you know he is so excited about well, that. And that's on Saturday night, May first. CJ's very impressive. Thank you. You know, out of all the people that came through, I have to admit, uh, you know, whenever there's a local kid making it big, you wonder, you know, how big can he get? But CJ's got the talent, and he and he can write, and that's what separates him from so yeah. many other artists. Well, he can write. Well, thanks, and you know, his second number one song, he had his second number one as a songwriter with some girls. Uh, just in 2020, they didn't get to have a number one party in Nashville because they were no, all shut down no due to COVID. On the road. So we're going to party it up for that as well with the hometown peeps, which is great. I, we got some pictures we have to show you. Let's show some of the ones from Mark. That's tell us about one. the history. This is like before there was even a building. Is that right? Well, that building is the old Continental Trailways bus terminal that was taken apart downtown Baton Rouge. My dad was driving down the road, saw it, bought it from him. We moved it to a piece of property and sat there for a while. And this was an opportunity for him to re-erect it. And that's him in the red cap with his back <laughs> and uh, supervising. Great that's real history. Great so, history. Yeah. And the signs changed just a little bit, but I bet it's yeah. still in the same spot, yeah. huh? It is. It is. Well, you know, back then it was Texas Dance Hall. Right. And it was 100% country for the first year and a half. Okay. Until we remodeled and came back to Texas Club. All right. And then look at those tickets. George Jones. I bet you have some uh, stories about George Jones. He didn't ride any, any tractor drunk up in there, but he, he probably had some stories. He did get drunk in there. <laughs> 1981 was a good show. 1986 was his drunk show. <laughs> and he could not finish a line. There's Hank. There's Hank. Yeah. There's Hank. And, and, and people are still standing up still front at that same room, show. right? That's probably still. He played for three or four hours, and he came out with three three dress changes and wow. played without a shirt for a while. He played every <laughs> instrument, and it was incredible. Yeah, he is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, love him. And, and then uh, so much history there. I know lots of folks have been there. I think they should, you know, reminisce their past and come this weekend or uh, – you know, what do you heck, say get ready just, for the future, too, what do you say for we just making it big time. Celebrate the 40th anniversary for the whole year. Because we didn't get to celebrate for a whole year, so why not have oh, We're going to make it last the whole year. We stuff. hope that yeah, this is not? just the beginning of it. So I think we got some flyers showing the 40th anniversary. That's the last show that CJ did there before COVID, which was around Mardi Gras of 2020 and then you know march came and things went away so our cool flyer about oh, the great. event on, on saturday mm -hmm. he's got a great graphic guy that puts things together so we got some vip tickets that for 30 bucks uh you can get in early pick your table out you're gonna uh Get there's some of a, these boozy cupcakes. There's a girls' night snacks. out that Abby Lee and Brittany Rose from Tiger 100.7 are going to be doing and promoting right? this week. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyone can get them VIP tickets and be a VIP with me. That's what and, I'm and saying. How, and how do you, how I'm do you always get those VIP. again? You just go to thetexasclub.com yeah, and yeah. get in there and get those. CJ's going to be giving away uh, some handwritten lyrics. He's been busy writing lyrics uh, for some <laughs> girls, a chance to win that, plus his Opry debut pack with the official poster and a bottle of wine. I have an idea. What do you have an he idea? He needs to write a song about the Texas Club. <gasps> he should. He should. Look, we're going to tell oh, him he needs to do one. that. <laughs> That'll be another like maybe on the way down here. He met, his, right? he met his darling at the Texas Club. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, he okay. needs uh -huh. to do that and drop That's that right. name in it. You don't mm -hmm. know how many people have told me that they met their significant other at. I bet I've had a lot of people. Some people who've come to shows before because it was like the time that they had met there and stuff, which is really cool. And so, Mark, you have to try one of the boozy cupcakes. All right. Yeah, this one's called Party Girl. So, but we do have <laughs> something for the boy boys. We do have the Bourbon Street Boy that has Maker's Mark in it. Oh, uh -huh. I know someone so that likes have? Maker's Mark. Th that that has vodka. vodka. Uh -huh. You know, because that's a party girl, right? Yes. Yeah, vodka. body girls are always always. Uh, vodka. Is it good? <laughs> yes, it's good. Yes. We're just going to start the celebration. Uh, Chef Amanda Schomburg, she uh, made these, and we're going to have a bunch of them uh, at the club for the party because, you know, you can't have a party without cake, right? 
Well, I never miss out on cake at a party. <laughs> You met a, never met a cake you didn't like. <laughs> um, good. I really think this is going to be a good time for a lot of people. And if you ever have memories of the Texas Club, then come celebrate Saturday night. If you don't have any memories of the Texas Club and you live in Baton Rouge or the greater Baton Rouge well, area. Well, you need some memories. Yeah, you, you need to make a few <laughs> memories. It's time to make some memories. Right. And general admission tickets, just $10. And you can get them at the door general, that night. So. That's right. Or $30 so. if you want to hang with me and Kay. Yeah, that's right. And have cake. But That's right. Ten bucks, come in. It's going to be a big party the entire night. So, well, thank y'all. Yeah, Appreciate we're it. so glad thank you, you came. so much Congratulations. For, for being with thank us you. and uh, and love sharing all the great history. So. And we're going to be right back with Leah Larson, Dr. Leah Larson. She is a dentist extraordinaire, and you'll be interested to hear what she has to say. And she's a lot of fun too. So come on back, hang with us, and uh, we we hope you get a ticket. Yeah. Good time. Good time. Great time. <laughs>